Breaking news. Before the G20, Erdogan hopes that Putin will take action on Black Sea Grain. On Monday, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan will meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin in an effort to persuade Putin to renew a UN backed Black Sea Grain deal. However, the tone of the meeting is expected to be gloomy due to the recent barrage of Russian drone strikes on Ukrainian port facilities. Erdogan has arrived in the Russian resort town of Sochi in the hopes of establishing a new negotiating framework to take to the Group of 20 summit in India later this week. The escalation of hostilities in and around the Black Sea, as well as concerns about the security of supplies from one of the world's largest grain exporters, have all contributed to weeks of volatility in global wheat prices. Ukrainian drones disabled a Russian naval vessel and an oil tanker, while Russian missiles repeatedly hit Ukrainian grain export infrastructure. Russia had attacked the southern Odessa region with drones in the days leading up to the talks, wreaking havoc on storage and industrial facilities as well as agricultural machinery. It also struck at two river ports serving as major Black Sea export alternatives. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine disrupted global grain markets, Turkey, a regional power with close ties to both Putin and the West, stepped in to mediate the original Black Sea Grain Initiative in July 2022. But the agreement was doomed to fail from the start because of slow ship inspections and political tensions in Ukraine, making it a rare diplomatic success in an otherwise grinding war. In July, Russia pulled out of the agreement and shut down the safe corridor because it felt its demands for better trade terms had been ignored. What the collapse of the Ukraine Grain Export Agreement means for the rest of the world? Ukraine's grain pact is already nullified as the deadline approaches. Russia is consolidating its control over global wheat production. On Monday, the deputy chief of staff to President Volodymyr Zelensky told Bloomberg TV that his country was ready to export to poor nations in Africa and Asia if Turkey would support the restoration of the grain deal. This year's harvests in Ukraine are looking promising. Ihor Zavkwa declared, All right, we're ready. When Russia employs aggressive instruments in the realm of food security, the entire world loses. The stakes for Erdogan's latest diplomatic effort have increased as a result of all this, and the implementation of US and European sanctions has only made matters more difficult. Needs in Russia After Russia's invasion of Ukraine, many businesses, including banks, insurers, and shipping companies, stopped dealing with Russian goods and the Baltic countries stopped handling Russian volumes through their ports so Russia has demanded that these barriers be removed so it can resume exporting food and fertilizer. Despite this, Russia has shipped more wheat abroad than ever before, and exports of fertilizer have returned to pre-war levels as well. Russia also wants to restore service to an ammonia pipeline that runs through Ukraine and link the SWIFT international banking network to the state-owned agricultural bank Rosalkazbank. Russia threatened not to reopen the commercial corridor until its demands were met. Russia's concerns have been addressed through collaboration between the United Nations and private sector banks and insurance providers. The United Nations played a critical role in securing the original deal. Recently, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres sent a new proposal to Moscow that he hopes will serve as the foundation for a reworked agreement. Whether or not the revised terms are sufficient to end the stalemate remains to be seen. We cannot have a Black Sea initiative that moves from crisis to crisis, from suspension to suspension, Guterres told reporters in New York on Thursday. As the saying goes, we need to have something that works, and that works to the benefit of everybody. Initiated with funding from Qatar, Ukrainian crops will still make it to market if Erdogan can't strike a Black Sea deal, but the added expense of transport could discourage the new grain plantings that are about to get underway, thereby reducing global supplies in the long run. However, Russia has proposed an arrangement whereby 1 million ton of Russian grain would be sold at a preferential price to Turkey, already a major Russian buyer, for processing and shipping onto countries in need. The foreign ministers of Russia and Turkey recently met to discuss this potential deal, which would include the additional offer of financial support from Qatar. 
A million tons is a lot, but Russia is expected to export around 48 million tons this season, so a million tons is peanuts. Because of Russia's withdrawal from the grain deal, Ukraine has been forced to employ other export channels, and the volumes involved are negligible at best. The Ukrainian Foreign Ministry has issued a warning against any deal that would ease Russian exports without improving Ukraine's maritime access, claiming that doing so would encourage Moscow to continue its aggressive actions. Since Putin is not anticipated to attend the G20 meeting, Erdogan will have a lot to discuss with him. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022, the two men have been in constant communication, working together on plans to increase gas imports and nuclear energy cooperation. It's likely that Erdogan will bring up the Syrian crisis while in Sochi. Putin says Russia's plan to build a gas hub in Turkey is still under consideration. So far, Turkey has refrained from intervening in the recent fighting between U.S.-backed Arab and Kurdish groups in northern Syria. It suspects the Kurds in Syria of having ties to Turkish separatist militants.